Right, welcome everyone to the 2023 uh, Homeland Party Annual General Meeting. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to invite our first speaker today, uh, the Chairman, Mr. Kenny Smith. Thank you very much, Daniel. So, welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and councillors, to, as Daniel said, the first annual general meeting of the Homeland Party. It is what we hope is a new way forward for the nationalist movement. For far too long, nationalism has been a dirty word in the eyes of the general public and in politics in general. We want to radically change the way think, people think about nationalism. And that starts with ourselves, with our own community. And we want to be that new way forward. I did not think this time last year I'd be standing in front of a meeting of my peers as a leader of a political party. Didn't enter my thoughts at all. But it became obvious to us that there was a clear lacking in serious community politics, in serious desire to win power back for our people. Because it is all very well to build communities of your peers that gather together for social events and, and to give yourself moral support. But if these same people do not have any power or control themselves, they can't influence the lives around them or their own community and make things better for their people. And we believe in nationalism with all our hearts. We know it can do amazing things for our people. We know it's the answer to the problems in this country for our people. But if you don't have the courage of your convictions, if you don't stand up and proselytize for our beliefs, then you're not going to change anything. And what the Homeland Party has got above all else is courage. The courage to stand up and proudly say, we are nationalists, this is what we stand for, and this is what we are going to do. The first thing all of us need to do is stand up in our home life, in our neighbourhoods, in our workplace, and start preaching about nationalism. Telling people about the benefits that may be gained if you stand up for your people and your land. And that's the new, forward we, way, new way forward we want to promote. So that we can eventually start taking control of local communities, start governing these local communities for the benefit of our people. Offer them safety and defence that they are not getting right now. And that's, that's something we have got in abundance. Now, this courage that we talk about can take many shapes and forms. It doesn't mean everything we need to be face out. There's this fallacy that, that I have been in the movement these last three years telling people everybody has to be face out. That's an absolute nonsense. It's not the case at all. Everybody, regardless of their position in life, whether they, they need to be open about their beliefs or not, can play a role. And I appreciate that there are some people who can't be um, open and so confident about their beliefs. But everybody needs to find that courage. And it starts with telling your friends and family. Even if you're not doing it elsewhere in your public life, you know, find that confidence to speak about being a nationalist. It's, it's a wonderful uh, philosophy. It's a wonderful worldview. It's a wonderful belief system that we can benefit our people with. So you have to find the confidence to speak about it, not just on the internet amongst your own friends, but amongst people in general. And if we do that, everybody can play a role. I have built a reputation as somebody who is, who is um, honest and forthright and straightforward. And that does sometimes rub up against the wrong way. But everybody who works with me knows that I 
have got integrity and honesty and courage. And I will find a way to help people get involved in the movement and have a positive impact. And the thing that has grated with me since I became, I became involved again in, in the last three or four years, I was warned, you're going to find this very difficult, that there's, the nationalist movement does not have the courage it used to have. People are hiding, people are anonymous, but they haven't been given leadership. In the Homeland Party, we have assembled a team that is providing that leadership now, that is giving support to our members and those that want to be leads in their community. And that's already making a massive difference. We formed on the 8th of May, which coincidentally is the anniversary of VE Day and the, 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 the anniversary of when Enoch Powell gave his Rivers of Blood speech. And since our very formation, we have um, acted like a political party because we are a political party. We are formally constituted as a political party. We function, our structure is that of a political party. We have got a treasury team that is determined to ha show transparency of our spending, of our income, that will give our members confidence. We have an elections team, a nominating officer, who is going to help ensure that we provide the best local leads and candidates for communities. And all of these things are radically different to what we, has, we see in the movement at the moment. Nationalism needs unity. And I will argue that the Homeland Party is that organisation because we are providing the things that people have been crying out for for years and we're starting to deliver. Less than five months old and we already have six councillors in Scotland and England. There are several more in the pipeworks who we hope to announce in October and November. We are confident of that. And I believe by the end of the year, we will have more councillors than all the other nationalist organisations combined in this country. That's delivering real tangible results in communities up and down the country where we are giving leadership to people. We are fighting back and stemming the tide of the liberal progressive system that has destroyed this country. We're making an impact. We're doing things that other people don't. Like I said, it is great to build community, to meet up and do social things, but it means absolutely nothing if you don't have control and power. And I alluded to earlier the fact that, you know, uh, recently my reputation has been one of the condemning talking heads, and I will not apologise for that, because it's all very well talking about what the problem is. But if you offer no solution, you're wasting people's time. And it was very heartening to me the other day to hear one particular Scottish YouTuber telling people that our community politics route was the answer. We are the ones who can, who can deliver on that. And that, that particular YouTuber is somebody who is not a public face. And that's great. I don't, I don't mind that because he's sending people in our direction. He's telling people, if you can, go down the community politics route. Sending people in our direction. That's what's important. So there is a way for everybody to play a role and get behind the Homeland Party and help make us a success. We've recently um, published a community politics um, guide, if you like, that we call the route we must take. We've delivered it in three different formats, one for public consumption, one for nationalist consumption, and one that is an internal document. That final internal document is um, a very detailed 10-page explanation of what community politics is and how we are going to um, deliver that, that, what are the stages of that. And it's very much based on something that is discussed in the nationalist movement a lot at the, at the moment, and that is Steve Brady's ladder strategy. And I 
um, believe in that strategy. I, th I think what, what Steve produced um, was fantastic in its day, uh, back for the National Front. It was modified, that was in 1987, I believe, and it was modified in around roughly um, 1999, 2000, something like that, late, the late 90s, um, for the BNP, but never fully rolled out in that organisation. But it was very clear for me, as, be, as being an old hand, yes, you've all heard it before, I used to be in the BNP, but uh, we, for many years, didn't follow the community politics route. And then when we did, that's when we actually started to gain success. We gained the confidence of the people, and they didn't care that the mainstream media and uh, the mainstream politicians were attacking nationalism and demonising us, because we were making a positive impact in people's lives. Community politics works. The ladder strategy works. The big difference I have from Steve Brady's model, though, is that I do not believe we should be picking the areas first. My strategy is that we pick the individuals first. And this comes right back to what I said right at the start of my, my little talk here, that the Homeland Party is about having courage, about finding the right people who can stand up for nationalism. And these have to be quality people. We don't just want courageous people who will stand up to left-wing aggression and, and smears and lies. We want people who are quality individuals in the communities that they live in. We'll all face trials and tribulations for standing up as nationalists. There's no two ways about that. But if you're a good person and your friends, and your neighbours, your work colleagues, they all know you to be a good person. They won't believe the smears of our enemies. So by the same token, if we choose our community leads, these people who are going to stand as community councillors, as parish councillors, district council candidates, if these people are good quality people, you've already half won the battle, haven't you? Because you've got a quality person standing up. And if you add courage into the mix for that, I think you have a winning combination that is going, will allow you to have a whole raft of councillors all around the country. And our route that we are going to take has many different levels and these will be addressed as we reach and tick off the initial ones. But it's been heartening for me to already see, like I said, less than five months old, six councillors already, three in England, three in Scotland, and one of them's already a chairman, already of his council. That's, a, that's, inc that's absolutely inc incredible. But um, I'm also aware that there are four councillors in England who are not part of the Homeland Party, who have become councillors on the back of the message that we are promoting, community politics. It's great seen in some nationalist papers and, and magazines that people are, are um, talking about community politics again and the whole debate going on of, of where the focus should be. So let me tell you why community politics needs to be the focus. Because if you have the quality individuals in a community doing the work that benefits the local community, you are influencing their lives and you are going direct to these people. That's why people who are disparaging a leaflet are wrong. Because you might not get many inquiries initially to your leaflets, but see if they're localised and they're delivered straight to their home. You're delivering your nationalist message straight into the hands of the people who can, can elect you. And local leaflets are much more effective than nationalist leaflets. It's, al it's always been the way. But if you just want to rely on mainstream media and get doing stunts to get headlines, your message has been delivered to these same people by your enemies and opponents. They are not going to paint you in a positive light. They will take your message and they will twist it. Dealing with the central nexus is the wrong way to do it. You have much more chance of gaining power in election by impacting things in local communities, dealing with a local nexus. Getting these people to see you as a positive 
influence in the community, as somebody they can go to for help and support and to change things for the better. Community politics absolutely works. The nationalist movement for decades has tried the national route. Get the headlines. The National Front, the early BNP, kicked their way into the headlines and it tarnished their reputation. It did nothing for them. As soon as they started making an impact in local people's lives, and I've told this story many times about in Burnley, when the local people cleaned up a community, um, brought in the skips and did the, did the clean-up, and the following week the Labour Party MP comes in and starts smearing them and saying, why are you dealing with these, these far-right people? The, people the, the local people chased them out and says, no, these people have actually done something positive in our community. They've helped us. You clear off. That's the power of community politics. And we can replicate that across the country. We're already doing it. That's why we've got six councillors. So, my message to our members today is to continue to promote nationalism. Reach out to the people in your lives because you are the best advert for nationalism we've got. We have got courageous people. We have got the quality people. And when we get folk like yourselves who then decide to be community leads, then we will build a team around them. That's stage one of our route to power. Once we get the individual who's prepared to stand up and do good work in their community, we will build a team around them. So that per first person obviously has to be a face-out open nationalist. But it doesn't mean the team around them all have to be face out open nationalists. Obviously the guys who are going to do the canvassing, going to do the door door activities can, but there's also people needed behind the scenes to do the research, to do all sorts of stuff behind the scenes that will support that campaign. So there's absolutely no excuse for anybody in any region not to be involved in community politics, to be involved in the Homeland Party. So our goal is initially to find and identify the candidates who want to be the local leads. And I can tell you now, I'm, I'm, I'm not letting any secrets out, I don't think, in our councillors uh, working group, we have 22 individuals, all prepared to be community leads. Isn't that incredible? Um, and these people, we are in the process of building a team around them, a regular team as close to them geographically as possible, who will come in and they will do positive things, good works, within their community on a regular basis. That's the must. And from that, we will find out what are the issues in the local community and we will try and fix them for these people. Sometimes it'll be pressurising the local authority or other agencies to do that work that's needed. Sometimes we'll do it ourselves. But we will build the reputation of that individual in that community First and foremost, it's not about building the Homeland Party. It's about building that individual's profile within that community, making them the lead. And that's, the, that's a massive, massive difference. So people are voting for somebody that they, they can identify and they can trust and they can actually go to. From there, we will continue building and working, doing as positive as possible, and then target elections. And we have made it a commitment that we will not just be allowing anybody to stand as a candidate. They are going to have to prove to us over the course of six months minimum that they are actually active in their local community and building a profile. We are never going to throw money away on parliamentary elections unless we believe we can win them. And that's far off the distance. We are going to build local community leads. And that starts with community councils, parish councils, We'll build up to district councils. But community politics doesn't just mean actual electoral politics at all. It can be being the leader or representative in your trade union at your work, place of work. It can be on a parent council. It can be on an NHS trust. It can be even on an allotment society. Be being the local chair of that. You decide who's there and what you're doing and how this money is spent. Sports clubs, any position of authority in your community, any respected position in your community should be 
a target of patriots. Because that's what the progressive liberals did to us. They didn't just assume control just like that. They too control little by little by little by little and until they finally were making the decisions. And I know from experience, I've been a community councillor in the past, two or three active people can dominate larger organisations. So it's, for me, it's not that hard. And we've got a road plan, a route plan to do that. And we've already seen, uh, uh, there's individuals in this organisation who have already become representatives for their union at work, who've already become co uh, members of their, their parent teachers association or parent council. So there are lots of ways that you can help and you can deliver for, for your people. It, it absolutely works. So I think... I'll end it there and I just want to thank everybody who has come on board with the Homeland Party already. It was quite a radical move for us to do that. We knew we would face the ire of some certain individuals. But, as I said before, we have courage. We've got the courage of our convictions and I sincerely believe if we all continue to work hard, follow the community politics route, we will start to impact people's lives up and down the country and become the premier nationalist organisation in this country and bring about unity of the nationalist movement because they will see that our way works and delivers for our people. Thank you very much.